Commander in chief just got back from his trip to Japan, and now we're learning just how far his staff went to keep him happy while he was there. Now to another report leading to some outrage in Washington overnight. The White House reportedly asked the U.S. Navy to keep a warship named after the late John McCain, quote, out of sight during President Trump's visit to Japan. Before his speech, this photo, obtained by the journal, shows a tarp hanging over the warship's name. Overnight, President Trump denying any responsibility, tweeting, I was not informed about anything having to do with the Navy ship USS John S. McCain during my recent visit to Japan. Okay, that is one of the funniest things ever. <laughs> they asked the U.S. military, the White House asked the U.S. military to hide a ship because it's named after John McCain. Yeah, that's how much Trump's people want to avoid him getting upset, you know? Just like the baby gets angry. <laughs> it makes me wonder, does the White House staff do this for everything that Trump hates? Like at dinner, do they throw tops over the vegetables on his plate? Shh! <laughs> Don't let him see. Like, wouldn't it be weird if the military ends up developing new stealth technology just to hide things that Trump doesn't like? Like, the generals would be like, we can use this technology to attack Iran. No, no, we need it to hide Eric. <laughs> And look, I think we can all agree what the White House staff did was disrespectful, especially to the memory of John McCain. But you have to admit they prevented a bigger disaster, right? Because if you know, if you know Trump, you know that if he saw that ship in Japan, he would have lost his shit. Yeah, he would have gone to the Prime Minister of Japan like, Shinzo, my friend, I saw a ship I don't like, and I need you to do another Pearl Harbor for me. <laughs> Get your best kamikaze pilot, someone who's done it at least 10 times. <laughs> Be like, but Mr. Trump, you're right, make it 20 kamikaze missions, I need the best. <laughs> Moving on to some other news. As the debate around climate change heats up, more and more Americans are putting pressure on their government to break away from fossil fuels. And the government's counterproposal is, well, what if we just call it something else? U.S. Energy Department officials have called the country's natural gas exports molecules of freedom being shipped to the world. The phrase, it came, in fact, in a press release announcing the expansion of a facility in Texas that produces liquefied natural gas, which they also called, quote, freedom gas. Yeah! <laughs> That's America right there. It's not liquid gas. It's freedom gas! That's so next level. You can't just change the name of liquefied natural gas to freedom gas. All right, that's already what Mike Pence calls the president's farts, okay? <laughs> He's like, ah, oh, yes, Mr. Trump, sir, thank you for another sweet breath of freedom gas. <laughs> and not to mention, calling it freedom gas might backfire, because good luck calling 911 if there's a gas explosion and you've changed the name, because you'll be on fire screaming, hello, 911, there's freedom everywhere! And they'll be like, that's right, God bless the USA, goodbye now. <laughs> Moving on to the world of sports, the NBA Finals have finally kicked off with the Toronto Raptors... Toronto Raptors going up against the reigning champs, the Golden State Warriors. But instead of focusing on the court, a lot of the drama is happening on the sidelines. With games one and two in Toronto, it's near certainty that Raptors rapper superfan Drake will be there, but don't expect any courtside antics from him this time. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver reportedly spoke with Drake and his manager about toning down his act, so it looks like there will be no more back rubs for the Raptors head coach, <laughs> Nick Nurse, in this one. Yep, that's right. The NBA has told Drake that he needs to stop his sideline antics, which include giving massages to the Raptors coach. <laughs> and he needs to stop this for two reasons. One, because the players find it distracting, and two, because it'll come back to hurt him when he runs for president someday. You gotta be careful of that, Drake. <laughs> but I know... I know an easier way that the NBA can solve the problem, right? Because you gotta understand, right now, Drake is in rapper mode, right? That's what rappers do. He's on the sidelines like, you guys suck. Yeah, you gotta finesse like a truck. Yeah, you tripping like a chump. You whack. Ah, ah, ah. It's all that, yeah. <laughs> it's distracting the players. All you gotta do is switch Drake back to R&B mode and he'll calm down. Yeah, just say something that he won't like. Be like, yo, Drake, did Rihanna ever call you back? And he'd be like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't wanna talk about the pain. You guys can play your game. <laughs> and, I, and look, I know what some people are gonna say. They're gonna say Drake is just enjoying the game. But let's be honest, there are times when it's a little too much, okay? Like, when I've been lucky enough to sit courtside at the Knicks, you don't see me acting the fool when they score, right? Because they don't score, but that's not the point. 